Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's time to talk about something that I wasn't expecting anytime soon. You see, the Chaos Cults have now been reworked. This is coming into effect for Korn, Sonesh, Zinch and Nurgle. Those specific races will now have an actual use for their cults and a better way of spreading them too. So let's not waste any more time, jump right in and talk about a bunch of changes. We'll start off with Korn and keep in mind that the basic function on how to acquire cults is, is pretty much the same with all the monogod factions. So you need a cultist, you need to send them off as an agent, and they can establish a cult at a price. There is a 15 turn cooldown, but after that, your cult will have access to a number of buildings. They will vary between gods, so obviously Korn's one will focus very heavily in warfare. You can see bonuses towards your troops, casualty replenishments, and so on. There's also extra bonuses that you can get when you've got more Corn corruption up and running. The majority of bonus effects are there for Chaos Corruption, but in one case you will need your agent around there and you'll have some buildings which you'll be able to destroy these are going to be linked towards you build something it'll declare war on a random faction for example and yeah from there you'll get a bunch of money a bunch of skulls that's it the cult is destroyed which works well if you need a bunch of cash very quickly there is also some other stuff there there is one building which is kind of used by everyone and this is regarding a cult chamber where you'll be able to build up it will cost a bit of maintenance it will spread corruption there is high discoverability keep this in mind when you've got discoverability coming in because yeah your enemies can find your cults and they can get rid of it just like you can get rid of a skaven undercity if they've got heroes around the area it will also make it easier for them to discover stuff the majority of the cult buildings are one turn or two however when it comes to the cult magus building it's one turn and then it takes 10 turns after that and it's worth it because you'll be able to get yourself a cult magus which is going to improve your cults even further as you can see at the moment the standard cult has two building slots, which means that you can get a decent amount of bonuses up and running. Which, by the way, once you've built up a Magus, it just destroys that building, it doesn't get rid of the cult. And, yep, you'll end up with a cult Magus. So, these look identical to your other cultists, however, they can only be used in the campaign map, they can't be used in battles or anything, and they are pretty special. So we're going over this during Corn, but it's going to be the exact same way for every one of the Mono God factions. Once you use the Magus to get a new cult, you'll get a fancy new building here, which will give you some income generated, while also get you some corruption. It also reduces discoverability, so you could be a little bit more cheeky and try to get another building up and running and have free buildings up there. When you get more corn corruption going, and this is why I said you might want to spread cults on the other side of the world where it's not really going to be in your pathway of destruction, at the beginning at 50, you'll get an extra hero and lord recruit rank faction-wide, which is pretty damn good, and also a hero capacity for the cultists. When it goes to 75, it's extra spreading of corruption. It's really good because at the end of the day, the extra spreading of corruption works towards all your other mechanics that you've had since vanilla. So you end up with a number of buildings that you can play around with and a lot of increased capacity for the cultists, which will allow you then to, you know, use them in battle too and not just as agents. 15 turns is a big cooldown, but it's very much guaranteed that your agents will be far away from your armies in most cases, especially when you're playing as corn. It's pretty much the same system when it comes to Nurgle, but you do have some changes in terms of buildings. Obviously, you'll be able to get infections generated per turn, which is very, very useful. Extra income. You can actually get a really good amount of income, especially if you're spreading plagues because plagues are another underlining factor here increasing plague duration there is so much here it's really thematic when they really said that yeah they were going all out they weren't kidding i'm super happy about this because it shows that you're going to be getting some really big differences obviously the teleporting system is still there and you can spread random plagues at the cost of a small amount of infections yeah pretty good here when you upgrade this, you'll be able to spread plagues to this settlement and adjacent settlements too, and also get the bonuses towards getting your extra hero capacity, uh, the discoverability, and so on. The same thing as Korn there. Again, a very good system because it shows that you've got a lot to play around with here, and they're stylized, right? It's really gone above and beyond my expectations for a cult rework. I've not been able to play much as Nurgle right now as we only had 24 hours, well, a little bit over 24 hours of the patch, and obviously I do have a life outside of YouTube, but I would say that from what I've been able to play with Nurgle for a little bit, 
the income generation has been quite good. It has been fairly decent. All right, so Nesh now, and you start off with a cultist from the very beginning of your campaign, so you're able to just send one off from the very beginning. Uh, if you want to, I wouldn't really risk it considering that you want their help against the elves at the beginning. But yeah, you'll be able to get devotees per turn here generally, but then also you can get more from corruption. There's a lot of corruption bonuses here with using devotees to be able to get diplomatic relations, uh, being able to seduce units at a cheaper cost. For all armies, by the way, increasing the budget also, which is fantastic. More corruption being spread around. Uh, you do have also growth, control. Uh, it's very much you benefit your enemy, but you also benefit yourself. Uh, you can get a disciple army spawned here, which I wouldn't really do, or transport your legendary lord. One thing to note here is that, yes, the cult that the Sinesh faction had naturally in the inner part of Ulf 1 still remains as a cult, and you can just play around with it over there. You won't have to use the cultists from the very beginning. Once you've gotten the Magus cult, you'll be able to actually increase the seductive influence by 200 in one go, plus also getting a decent amount of money to the local region owner, just in case you want your vassal to have a little bit of extra cash. You know, you're paying for the services, right? Again, you will have the special building to get some cash and also pick up some extra corruption, getting your lords and heroes stronger. It's overall a really good push, especially when you're playing a Sunesh, I think it's been quite helpful because the other ones are better at melee and better at just combat. The Sunesh ones can be a little bit squishy. So having extra higher tier characters come out, maybe even as close to becoming the exalted demons as possible, just really does help. Okay, and last but not least is Zinch, a faction which is in still need of help, but I do think that they got some very, very good benefits when it came to the cults. So, you can generate grimoires per turn, enabling lightning strike when battle reinforcements are present, which is also quite good, giving you deployment for Vanguard. Uh, you'll be able to expand the cults here. There's a 5% chance with one of the buildings to expand into adjacent regions. That also is really good because you're going to be generating your cults naturally. It obviously helps there. Changing the way cost reductions by 80% faction wide, uh, getting a lot more corruption as you can expect. The idea for Zinch is you're going to get cults a lot quicker. I was playing around for about an hour or two with these guys. I have not slept, by the way. I have barely slept thanks to this uh, early access period. But yeah, an hour or two with Kairos, and I was able to spread cults a lot quicker than the other Monogod factions, which makes a lot of sense here. My only issue is I was hoping by now we'd have another character for Zinch, but uh, I guess we're going to have to wait for that. <laughs> Not only that, you've got the super building also, which for Zinch just randomly establishes free cults across the world. Again, if you're going to be spreading a lot, trying to get that corruption all over the place, it's pretty damn good. You're going to need grimoires for it. Some of the buildings do cost grimoires. It's just how it is. As with Nurgle, some of them are infections. Sinesh, it's devotees. I think that this is a stupidly good improvement of the cult system. The original one was just complete ass, let's be honest there. It wasn't good, there was like no reason to use it barring Nurgle for generating infections. All and all, it's so freaking goddamn good. I want to play the Monogods again and I'm going to be doing so because there's a reason to go back to them, and I think that that's such an impressive thing. I know this might not be a big thing, I'm pretty sure that most of the Monogod factions aren't that popular, but I like them. I've always loved Sunesh, for example, and I've been really enjoying Nurgle since Thrones of Decay. So, yeah, now I've got reason to go back to Nurgle once again anyway, just so I can play around with the cults. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion, and yeah, there's a few videos coming out today. Have fun, and well, if you're not watching these, you're probably playing the patch anyway, because it drops at the same time. I just hope you're enjoying it. I feel good about this patch. It's great. Have a good day, guys. I'll see you all again very, very soon.